Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be teaching you everything I know about preventing rust on your hand tools and your power tools. At the beginning of the video I will talk to you about preventing rust on your hand tools, then we'll move over to the power tools. I will also give you some tips about how to remove rust if you already have it, but uh, this is mainly a rust prevention video because we don't want rust in the first place. And at the very end of the video I'll give you a couple of fun tricks that work to keep your hand tools nice and rust free in your tool cabinet. So, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. product I use to prevent rust on my hand tools is jojoba oil. Now I bought this jojoba oil when I was buying some of my Lee Nelson tools and I saw uh, the Lee Nelson jojoba oil on the website and I stupidly bought it because I thought that was you know the right oil. I didn't know at the time that pretty much all jojoba oil is the same. You can actually get this at a beauty shop because I think some of the ladies use it for their skin or something like that. Uh, and it's much cheaper if you buy it that way. It's still the exact same jojoba oil in the bottle. But yeah, I'll put some links in the description down below where you can buy some. A similar oil is also camellia oil. Alex, my benchmate at Ryko Wood, uses camellia oil. I prefer jojoba oil because of the consistency of it, but they do the exact same thing, they prevent rust. So I'll put some links in the description below if you want to check them out. But quickly to show you how I would apply this, I'd get a paper towel and uh, rip it in half and I would spray a couple of sprays of jojoba oil onto the paper towel and I rub it on the exposed area of the cast iron, also the blade. And if I was leaving the workshop for a couple of weeks, I would leave the tool just like this and put it back in the toolbox. But because I use these tools every day, what I do is with the other half of the paper towel, I rub it off again. Now rubbing the oil off doesn't take off all the oil. It will leave a thin layer of it to protect the tool. The reason I rub off the oil is because I don't want spare residue or oil sitting on the tool. That might make it so that when I next use the tool, uh, the oil will get onto the wood or onto the toolbox. And if I left the oil on, the next day I use it, I just have to rub it off again. So I just rub it off straight away and that's fine, it still leaves a protective layer onto the tool. So I put jojoba oil on my tools roughly once every other week, which might sound not a lot, but it's working for me. But if you're not using a tool a lot, you don't need to oil it a lot. So a shoulder plane that I don't use that often, you can go a month without oiling it because that last coat I put on is still lasting because I haven't used the tool. So you can judge it depending on how often you use the tool. So I haven't ordered these tools in a couple of weeks, so I'm gonna do them all now. All right, so I forgot to mention, you can also put the oil on bronze uh, and that would stop it from tarnishing as well. Now talking about leaving the workshop for a couple of weeks, you can also buy this special paper, which is called corrosion inhibitor paper or rust prevention paper. Now this is pretty much the paper you get when you buy your tool, uh, which is sort of a waxy coated paper. And if you wrap your tools in that, uh, it should stop your tools from rusting. This is something you would do if you leave the workshop for a very long time, like if you go traveling uh, where you're away for a few months. It also might help if you coat the tools in some oil before you put it in the paper. That might just protect it even more. Now, if you ever were to have a little bit of rust show up on one of your tools, you can buy something called a hand block, which is basically a big block of grit. You, Sandflex, which is the brand of this one, do a medium, would do a coarse, medium and fine. I got the fine because that is the grit Lee Nielsen used to uh, grind the sides of their planes. So if a little bit of rust started to appear somewhere, you could simply just use this hand block to rub it off. I would go lengthways across the plane because if you went in circular motions, it would be much easier to see those scratch marks. But yeah, having a sand block is very helpful. It has multiple uses. You don't just have to use it for hand tools. You can use it 
for uh, machinery as well. And before we move on to the power tools, I've got a quick tip. If you've got candle wax, literally just a candlestick, try rubbing it on the bottom of your hand plane, on the sole of it, and that should help the tool glide over the top of the wood much more easily and smoothly and improve the performance of the tool. And it should make the tool much easier to use. So if you haven't already, give that a try. That might work out for you. And yeah, let's move on to the power tools. Okay, so it's a different day, that's why I'm wearing different clothes. But I've got three products here to help you with uh, rust prevention on your large machinery. Now, first of which is, it's an easy option. Everyone has white spirit. Now this is a temporary solution uh, if you didn't have any proper products uh, for preventing rust. Let's say you were waiting for it to arrive, you ordered it online. This is a temporary solution to help you during that time. So if you uh, were to get a paper towel, put some white spirit on it and rub it all over the, the cast iron top, that will give a very small uh, protective layer and prevent rust. If you were to do that every day, then there's no way your tool will rust. Again, that is a temporary solution because it's so high maintenance, it's not realistic. You know, not a lot of people will be doing that every day. But uh, as soon as you get your tool, if you wanted just to give it a bit of protection while you get sorted buying, you know, some product, if you have white spirit, that should help you prevent rust during those early stages. The next product is Machine Wax by Axminster. Now later on in this video, I'll show you how to apply this, but I highly recommend it. It's cheap. I think Axminster do worldwide shipping, so you can get it anywhere. All you do is you get a paper towel, put some machine wax on it, rub it into the cast iron top, I think you leave it to dry for maybe 30 seconds just till it hardens a bit and then you buff it off. This has two benefits to your machine, not only will it prevent rust, it would actually make your cast iron tops silky smooth, so if you put on your table saw, band saw, planar thicknesser, the wood will just glide over the top, it will be much easier to use a tool, safer, more enjoyable, the wood will just run really easily over the top and it will make your I guess woodworking experience uh, much easier. So yeah, also, believe it or not, metal is actually porous. Obviously it's not as porous as wood, um, but it does have pores in it, so the more you add the machine wax, the more the wax will get into the metal and uh, prevent rust. So I actually apply this not as much as I like, because I'm away from the workshop quite a lot of the time, but I probably, I probably add wax once every two months um, and you know my cast iron top seemed to be fine if you were to add this once a month once a week I can't imagine what it would be like there's there would be no chance of rust on your on your work tops and the tops would be so smooth so highly recommend this product it doesn't involve a lot of maintenance now if you're away from the workshop for a long time I recommend using WD-40 just to spray it on top of the cast iron surface and that should protect your machinery now if you wanted to go one step further, what you could do is spray it on top of the cast iron tops and then get some baking paper or parchment paper and lay it over the cast iron top. Now that's pretty much how a tool would come when you order it. You might remember you normally get a plastic film that you lift up and there's some sort of grease underneath it. That's pretty much what this is. So if you're away from the workshop for you know, half a year or you go traveling, just spray some WD-40 on top, put some baking paper over that and that will really prevent any moisture getting onto the metal or anything like that so there's no risk of your machinery rusting. Now one added procedure I do when leaving the workshop is if you have any old bed sheets. I have some old uh, kid bed sheets so obviously it's uh, I don't use them anymore but if you were to do that to all your tops uh, I work in a garage so I don't know where the leaks are you might have the same issue if there's leaks in your workshop. If you put a cover over it, that's one added level of protection. Uh, so if there's a leak on it, the leak would get onto the material and not your machinery. So whenever I leave the workshop, I try to remember to add a cover on. It's just an added layer of protection. So hopefully that was helpful to you. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some machine wax onto the top just to show you how I would apply it. So just to expose the whole top, I'm gonna remove the guard and the fence at the back. Okay, so what I've done is I've ripped a paper towel in half and I'm just going to apply a bit of machine wax onto this. Now, you don't need a lot at all. I'm just going to rub it all over and try and 
work it in, try and push it into the metal and you'll feel it start to sort of harden and work into the metal. And then I'll put a bit on this side. Try and get it in all the areas. Okay, so now with the other half of the paper towel, I can now start to buff the machine wax. Now buffing it doesn't remove all of it, it just makes it smooth and it should be all right to buff, as you can see. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but as I buff this side, it gets much shinier and much smoother. Hopefully you can see that. Now again, I do this maybe once every two months, which is probably not what I recommend. You should do this as much as possible. It's just I'm away from the workshop quite a lot. But if you were to do this once every other week, it doesn't take long, then that would be fantastic for your machinery and the wood will glide much easier over your cast iron tops. So now that is really smooth. So I'm just going to do this side. All right, and that is how easy it is to apply this machine wax. So I'll add a link in the description down below if you want to check that out. All right, so I got another tip. When you're sharpening your hand tools, um, whether it be ceramic stones, wet stones, diamond stones, glass stones, anything, normally you spray, uh, you know, sort of a lubricant down on it. Uh, some people spray water on it, but I'm always nervous about spraying water on the stones because if water gets onto your blades, then in theory it should it would rust it over time. So what you can do is you can buy a product called Honrite. I think they have Honrite Gold, Honrite original they're pretty much the same thing i think and you mix that with water it says what the ratio is on the back of the bottle it's probably about 20 to 1 or something but check uh, and that's what i've done here is it's home right a little bit of home right mixed with some water and whenever i'm using my stones uh, my ceramic stones or diamond stones i just spray that on the surface sharpen my blades and they've never rusted so if you're worried about that or you've had issues with blades rusting in the past try out this method buy some home right mix it with water Put it in a spray bottle and you've then got a solution that will uh, not rust your tools. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Alright, so before I end the video, I want to tell you about the two tricks I have to prevent rust in your toolbox. Now the first one is, when you get tools, normally they always come with these silicon packets. Now, I have tons of these. Now most people chuck these away, but I actually keep them and I put them behind my toolbox. Uh, behind that wall there and you never see them. Now the reason they put these with the tool in the packaging is because if these are transported overseas the silicon pouches will uh, absorb all the moisture and prevent the tools from rusting. So in theory if you have lots of these silicon pouches and you put them in your toolbox you can put them anywhere you like. I put them behind the wall because I don't really want to see them. So then it should absorb all the moisture and prevent your tools from rusting. My tools haven't rusted yet, and maybe this is the reason why. Now the second tip I have is from a product that you might not think of, which is actually vapor rub, which is a chest rub if you have colds or something like that. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I wrote this down. I read this online. This is a mentholated rub, and in this paste, it contains something called camphor. And as this petroleum paste uh, evaporates. Uh, I've drilled some holes in the lid here. I've had this for a couple of months and obviously it evaporates pretty slowly. Uh, but as this evaporates, the camphor fumes naturally displaces water and uh, it prevents your tools from rusting. So what I do is I put it behind my saw there and it uh, is preventing my tools from rusting. Also, it smells pretty nice. So when you close your toolbox, all those fumes build up and the next time you open your toolbox, you'll smell it and it makes your toolbox smell very nice. So uh, it has two benefits actually. I didn't make these tricks up myself. I learned them from other people online a long time ago and I forgot how or where or what video I found it from uh, and I tried to look and I couldn't find them but maybe if you're watching this video thank you comment down below these methods work and I think they're great so try them out for yourself so I hope the information I gave you you found useful if you think some of your fellow woodworking friends might like to see this video or might find it useful please share this video if you're new to this channel please subscribe I'm working on a couple of big build projects at the moment that I think you might be interested in uh, if you enjoyed the video give a like if you've got any questions about anything I talked about or if you just want to chat, comment down below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. I'd like to love you.